A typical Excel chart will look something like this. We've got two data points, a starting balance and an ending balance, and I want to tell this story through a chart. So I create a column chart, and this is what I get. Now it does tell the story, but it's not very detailed. How did we get from the starting balance to the ending balance? What happened in between these two points in time? Well, what if we could make a chart that looks like this? This is what's called a waterfall chart. A waterfall chart shows you all of the individual transactions that occurred between a start point and an end point. So you can see where exactly you spent money and made money. We see where we started, we see where we ended. So let's examine how we need to set the data up to create this chart, the actual creation of the chart, and then we'll do some customization with the colors. You can download this file from a link in the video description. That way you can follow along with me as I build this. Plus you could examine the solution files with everything fully baked. We'll begin by looking at how to set up our data. The first thing we want is our starting balance. Then what we'll do in this area is list all of our expenses and our revenues. Now I've generically labeled these as just spend one, spend two, earn one, earn two. But in the real world, you want to put something very descriptive here that explains exactly what these numbers represent. And then we finish with an ending balance. And this is just a simple sum function that adds up all these values. Revenues are represented as positive values. Expenses are represented as negative. So we'll click in the data go up to insert, and then in the chart section, we'll go up here to waterfall, give it a click, and now we have our default waterfall chart. Now this is going to require some tweaking. First thing we wanna do is we wanna move this and resize it. So let's make this a bit easier to work with. The next thing we wanna do in a waterfall is define what are called the total columns. The total columns in this case would be the first column and the last column. So these are not transactions, this is just where we started and where we ended. So what we can do is we can right click on one of those bars and choose set as total. And notice how this ending balance now goes from zero all the way up to 74,000. See before, I'll go ahead and clear that total, it was treated as another revenue, but this is not a revenue, this is our ending balance. So a right click set as total will exempt that from being treated as a revenue. Now even though this one is behaving the same way, we want to set it as a total as well. Because if nothing else, this will give it the proper color. So what we have now are our totals at the beginning and the end, and all of the values in the middle are known as contributions. So a negative contribution in this case is orange and it goes down, a positive contribution is blue and it goes up. Now to make this look much better, let's get rid of some of the information in a default waterfall chart that we don't really need. We don't really need the grid lines, so we'll delete those. We'll get rid of the y-axis because we don't need those. We have data labels and we don't need to say the same thing twice. I don't really need to give it a legend because it's understood that these are increases and decreases. And in this case, I'm also going to get rid of my title. One thing I also like to do is to remove the border from my charts because I like my charts to look like they're just floating on the spreadsheet. So with the chart selected, I'll go up to Format, Shape Outline, No Outline. And so now I've just got a floating chart. The data labels are a bit difficult to read because they're small, so I'm going to change their point size to 12. And I'll do the same thing for the x-axis. I'll change it to 12. Now another thing you can do with waterfall charts is control the width of the columns and the connector lines if you wanna display them or not. So if we double click on a column, this will open up the format data series panel. Here we can decide whether we wanna show the connector lines or not. And this is strictly a personal preference. Some people like them, some people don't. And you can also control the gap width of these bars. So if you wanna have them very thin or basically have them touching, I'm going to go with 20%. And there's our waterfall chart. Now let's look at a variation on this theme where we include what's known as a midpoint balance. This is where you can show the status of the account at some midpoint, and you can have several of these. So like before, I've got the same data, but in the middle I have a sum function that takes the starting balance and then gets the sum of everything up to this point. Then I have additional transactions that follow that, followed by another sum function that starts from the midpoint balance and then adds up everything that came after it. So as before, we'll click in the data, go up to insert, in the chart section, waterfall chart. Everything after this is exactly the same, except for one minor thing. So we'll move our chart, give it a nice resize, get rid of the chart title, get rid of the legend, get rid of the y-axis, get rid of the grid lines. I'll select my data labels, increase their font size to 12. Same thing for my x-axis, 12 points. The one thing that's going to be different here is when I select the first column, I can right click, set it as a total, go to the last column, set it as a total, but then I'll also go to my midpoint balance calculation and set it as a total. And as I said, you can have as many midpoint calculations as you need. So maybe you want to start with the beginning of the year, the ending of the year, and have a midpoint balance at every quarter or every month. For our final example, let's look at an interesting scenario that sometimes pops up. 
I'll go to my data, which is the same data we had in the previous example. Go up to Insert, Waterfall Chart. Let's size it, move it, delete the things we don't want, increase our font size, set our total bars. So right-click, set as total, right-click, set as total, right-click, set as total. The problem with this waterfall chart is our starting balance, our midpoint, and our ending balance are not very far apart from one another. The contributions are so small relative to the totals that we lose all the detail. So probably the easiest way to solve this problem is to just reset the bounds of the Y axis. So I'm gonna double click on the Y axis, and then over here in the axis options bounds section, I'm gonna set my minimum to 49,000, and my maximum to 50,500. You may need to experiment with these values to try to get the perfect look that you're going for. Now, once you have set that, then we don't need the y-axis any longer, and now we've got a much more useful waterfall chart. Now, it's never a good idea to skew the axis in your charts because it can portray a false story. So we need to let the user know that this chart does not start at zero, but rather starts at 49,000. So what I like to do is go up to Insert, we'll go to Shapes, and you can pick any shape you like, but I'm gonna come down here and pick this one, a call out. I'll draw a little call out shape right here. I'll position it, say about right there, maybe change its fill color. But then in that shape, I'll do a right click edit text and add something like chart starts at 49,000. Of course, you'll wanna change the color and the size and the placement. And again, you can experiment and get whatever look you're going for. But at least this way, the user knows that this does not start at zero. Finally, let's talk about setting the colors. If you're not happy with these colors, the one thing you don't wanna do is go to each one of these bars and change their colors separately. Not only is this tedious, but if you add new data points into your data set, they won't get those colors. You'll have to go back and set the colors for them. So what we want is for the colors to be universally applied based on whether that data point is a total, a positive value, or a negative value. So with the chart selected, if I go up to chart design, there is a change color section in here where you can experiment with some built-in color palettes, but in my experience, these can be kind of limited. I may want to use my own color palettes. And this feature does not give you the ability to add to or modify the existing list. So if you want something a little more versatile, let's go up to page layout and colors. Now here you have many more options to choose from. Plus, if you don't like any of these, you can go down to customize and you can create your own color palette. Now the key to this is understanding which of these controls applies to totals, positive values, and negative values. Accent 1 controls positive values. So even though these colors I'm going to choose are a bit garish, they will make the point. So let's say with positive, we want those to be green. Accent 2 controls negative values, and maybe I'll set those to red. Accent 3 controls the totals, and I'll make those like a medium gray. You'll want to save this with a name so you can use it later, and I'll just call this my waterfall colors. I'll hit save, and now I've got this color palette. I'm not a fan of using dark red for the negatives, but this is just for demonstration. If you don't like those colors, you can go back up to colors. You'll see the entry you created up here. You can right click, go to edit, and then make whatever modifications are necessary. If it turns out you don't want these colors at all, you can right click and delete. Now something to be mindful of with these custom colors, this color palette resides on this PC only. So if you send this file to somebody else, this color palette does not go with it. And then when that user opens it up, it's probably going to open up as just the default color palette based on the theme. So that's a waterfall chart. Think about using one of these next time you go to create a column chart and see if you can give better insight and detail into what actually happens between two points in time. Don't forget to download this file from the link in the video description so you can go back and look at everything that I've created. Thanks for watching, and remember, at BCTI, the learning never stops.